Hello everyone, it is I, Mark Major here. This is the Action Figure Atorium behind me there. You can see it kind of in the distance. We'll get into that later. Today though, I'm gonna be talking about the latest wave of action figures that has been announced by the Four Horsemen. As some of you have figured out by now, I am a huge fan of the fantasy genre. I love fantasy action figures, and I specifically love the Four Horsemen's take on the fantasy genre. I think it's quite excellent, and I think the figures they're making are also quite excellent. And that's the reason why when they release a wave, I like to do this thing where I go through and I just kind of chat about each figure. And then I sort of guess just a little bit which ones I think are going to go on to become the collectible figures that earn the top dollars later, which is oftentimes pretty easy to figure out. You just kind of look at which one you think is going to have the lowest supply. Those are the ones that usually turn out to have the uh, biggest price increase in the end. And then I'm also going to weigh in myself and tell you if I like any of the figures and characters and if I'm going to buy any of them. So I think everybody needs to, you know, all come together on this, um, strap on that leather, and of course, hold on tight. Um, so let's switch over here to uh, Mythic Legions. This wave is called Ashes of Agbendor. Not sure exactly what Agbendor ashes are, but <clears throat> apparently it's got a lot of blue people in it. Okay, so here are the figures that they're releasing. Let's cut over to the shop, which is actually kind of a different website. Um, just to show you what they got for sale, of course, you can always get a gift card, you can always do the all-in. So there are three figures that are kind of their entry-level price of $37. It's these three, uh, here, this guy, this cat guy, and this lady here. Then there's some deluxe figures at $40, bucks, which is actually kind of weird. It's only $3 more for deluxe. Would figure they'd be $10 more, but okay. 10, 15. And then we've got some kind of luxury items here. There's a centaur, there's an ogre. So those are oversized guys. They always charge more for those. Um, there's some little guys, but they're a two pack. These are goblins. I think of them as sort of the, the Jawas of Mythos. Mythos is the uh, name of the world these guys are all from. And then they've got this pretty cool um, sort of knight builder. He's like a knight and you get all this stuff. And we're gonna look at all these um, here in a minute. Now, what I do is I go through the cheapest ones first, up to the most expensive, that kind of thing. And we just take a look, you know, sort of not a big deep dive. We just see what they're offering so that, you know, we can mark for the record that we have seen it. So, first thing in the $37 range, this um, female sort of wizard spellcaster, uh, Aza or Asia or Aja, um, could be any of those, could be none of those, could be, um, you know, a lot of silent letters, could be four silent letters in this. So this is actually a revamp of a previous figure. Now the previous figure of hers, uh, I have had on my looking for list for a long time. I'm trying to get all the female figures in hoods. At the time I started collecting them, there was three of them. I have one out of the three, this would be two out of the three. So I have an eBay email alert when these come up for sale and they kind of go up for sale for a lot. I was really hoping that I might get one, although it seemed very, very, very unlikely, but maybe get one in the blind box sale that the Four Horsemen had recently where they gave you sort of one older cool figure and then they gave you a swig. Um, so I'm definitely going to be picking this up myself. I'm gonna say it right out of the gate. This figure is even better than the original. Comes with these really great looking soft goods. Look at that amazing looking staff. Um, all the weird sort of uh, Rolling Stones tattoos all over the body look pretty good. All the little armor kits and things look amazing. Look at that. This is a, that glove looks real. This is a really cool looking figure. It's a cool looking pose with the weird sort of Doctor Strange effects and shooting a, uh, you know, a sort of a skull out of the hands. And of course you get it with the hood, people. You get it with the hood, so it's going to work great with the cloak. Okay. Um, 
That to me is a hit. Now let's go to this guy. I'm gonna. I feel like the f first guys are the best. Look at this dude. Look at this guy. Are you guys looking? You're not even looking. Take a look at this guy. So he's basically they took a humanoid body and they put one of their cat heads on it. But this cat head looks great. This is the best looking cat head I've seen. I know they did a tiger. It's called Balam. I know they did. A panther, I got that one in the heads pack, which it's just all black. Um, and then they have one that's sort of a tribute to uh, Masters of the Universe Cringor. He's called Kauros. But this one, the paint on it looks really fantastic. And then look at the character's leather armor. Look at the detail on this. This is pretty tricked out. In fact, we should probably uh, go to the store and look because you can get this sort of highlighted close-up. Look at how amazing the leather looks on this figure. This armor and the detail on it and the paint on it, the sculpting, this is all pretty much um, as far into the realm of boutique action figures as you can get from like a design point of view. And uh, he also comes with, should be noted, let's go back to uh, if you don't like the cat head, which would be weird, you can also get a Papa Smurf. I believe that's the name given to him by the YouTube channel European Lore. Or you can get some kind of a weird orc assassin guy. They all look pretty cool on the body. And look at this, you get these kind of cool keys. Of course, they always give you weapons and hands. That's uh, expected. So this guy is, in my opinion, he's a home run. I think that's a great looking dude. Now this guy, okay? This, this is kind of terrible. This, to people who put together these combination of colors and the soft goods, they're colorblind, they're, they're into clashing colors, they're into ugly colors. And if you don't know what I mean by that here, I've actually got, there's a book. I'm going to show you guys. Cam got unplugged. Okay, so there's a book. Here, check this out. So it's called uh, Color Combination, Designer's Guide, okay? And there's a section in here. There's a section. Let me point this out to you guys. Page 114 of the book. It's called Bad Color. See that? All right? And they give you all these examples of, uh, you know, bad color used in design as a way of, uh, you know, making a point, that kind of thing. So this guy, this dude is an example of bad color, right? this uh, color combinations, these just don't work. And uh, it's a pretty phoned in looking face on the dude. This brown with the maroon and the blue and that particular shade of green um, and very unfantasy like, very sort of like, not of any kind of medieval scheme. But this is cool, and this might be the selling point for some people, the invisibility man, where you get invisible hands and head. That might be kind of cool, but I think that this is sort of a really heinously ugly, ugly figure from them. Okay, so that's the $37 range. We're gonna look at the two deluxe figures. And basically, they're deluxe, they cost a little bit more, I think, because they come with the wings. So this one's called Golden Skeleton 2. It's an update of the previous Undead they did, uh, Golden Skeleton, basically. They took a skeleton and they painted him gold, and this is another version of him. Uh, if you're into Undead, you'll probably want to dig it, but then check out this guy, right? Joseph of the Golden Spear. Um, this is kind of another example of peak action figure creating. If you can look at the amount of detail in the color on the highlights on this figure. In fact, let's go dig them out on the store. Right? Look at how they're able to get the purple to sit on the edges. They're able to perfectly hit the gold on the little rivets. 
the gold inside the helm, the purple on the edge. And then look at the detail and the paint on these wings. Now this would be cool to get this guy and reuse the wings if you're someone like me who bought the second edition Eagleus where he's got the red, white, and blue wings, which I like, but it'd be cool if I had the original Eagleus with the brown wings. I think that would be badass and that's how you get them. And it would be cool if they actually sold wings separately like this. The way you can get like the demon wings or um, the skeleton wings, I think that would be cool. So to me, this cat, and look, they give you plenty of juicy heads with this dude. Cool, um, cool shield. The shield looks amazing. Looks like some old Greek shield. Um, this is an amazing figure. This figure is going to do well. You'd be dumb not to buy this. Okay, so that's the two deluxe guys. Now we got four figures to close out. Um, let's talk about the two big dudes. We got the Centaur. So if you've bought Centaurs in the past, I think they did one, you'll probably want to get this guy, even though he's the blue Centaur. Or if you collect blue people, right? It's kind of cool. Extra head's cool. It's a really awesome looking uh, weapons and shield, especially. Right? And then, of course, you know, there's an ogre. And these are both 65 bucks. And if you're into giants and ogres, of course, you're going to get the giant and the ogre. Right? But look at how amazing the detail is on this. And the colors they came up with for this, you know, little highlights of the armor on the blue with the blue skin and the, the cool fur cape, how it's cut like that. It's it's pretty tough to think that you can get this guy for 65 bucks. I think 65 bucks is kind of cheap. And also he comes with like a, uh, some sort of like a frost giant head too, if you want to make a giant figure. So that guy is kind of a home run, despite the fact that he's 65 bucks. Um, but I still think that that's a good deal. Okay, then there's, for people who collect goblins, there's these two guys. It's this double pack. They've been doing this thing. They did one the, one of the other ways where it's a double pack of dwarves. This is a double pack of goblins. They must figure that dwarves and goblins don't sell as well. So they got a package two together. Um, I'm guessing it's their marketing. Um, but 75 bucks gets you that. And then the last thing we're going to point out here is... Uh, um, where did he go? I don't see him in this wave. Let's go to the products. So this guy is not included in that wave list, it doesn't look like. You guys see him there? The blue shield? Yeah, here he is. Oh, he just was kind of blending in. So this cat, right? So he's basically a generic knight, and it's the idea is, of, God, look at how cool the armor is. Um, he's like a generic knight, but he comes with, like, a lot of accessories. So to me, I feel he's like a $30 figure with 30 bucks worth of accessories as I... I guess how they're pricing this out is that's that's how I take it that the accessories accounts for about half you know and you look at all the uh, characters you can make out of him um, that feathers on top is just outrageous like the detail but look at all the stuff you get for this now I happen to have um, the this is this guy's known also as the he's called Blue Shield in this way, but he's known as the Deluxe Knight Three Builder. I have the Deluxe Knight Two Builder, which is the female version, and I actually have some extra legs and arms to make two complete figures out of it. But originally it was one figure, and you could just kind of swap out some pieces. And you can see in this one that he's also got the sort of yellow and blue um, tunic just like this. So this would be a cool piece to have if you have this Deluxe Night Builder 2 as I do. And um, I would love to have one of these guys. Money's a bit tight at this time. And I feel that this is the kind of thing that they probably treat as an evergreen figure that he goes to every convention and he can be at every convention for a long time. They'll always have him for sale and he always sells well. And when people are ready to buy this guy, they buy him. That's what I'm guessing. Okay. Let's go over here. Let's talk about which ones I think we're going to uh, sell the most of uh, and which ones I think are going to go up in value. So I'm going to say that a lot of people are going to pile on the Joseph of the Golden Spear, the uh, Colonel Parker, which that's how you'd spell Kai Paka, but it's pronounced Colonel Parker. 
he's the cat mountain lion guy and the uh aja spirit bender two those three look incredible that's what most people are going to buy that's what the most of them are going to be out there so you're going to see a lot of them for a while but i think that the kind of thing that those figures are going to be in demand forever so i think the price on these is going to stay pretty steady i think the resale value is going to be higher than pre-order value on these guys uh, but i think that we're going to see a lot of them out there in the wild so if you want to get one you'll be able to get one but i don't think you're ever going to get one cheap because i think someone's always willing to buy these guys i don't know that the skeleton's going to do that well they just did a gold skeleton he does have wings that is pretty cool undead people will buy him i think he's going to be kind of a lower seller and I think this guy is going to be a lemon. I think that they're going to sell very few of this guy. I could be completely wrong. They could email me a screenshot of their sales pre-order and this guy's number one and I would have to eat crow. But I'm just going to say that based on the ugliness factor of him and the fact that out of all the wizards they've done like this, he's pretty much kind of last place. And there was a few lemons in a couple of the previous waves in terms of the wizards. Hate to say it, I'm a big fan, but you got to call it as you see it. So I'm going to say that the sales are going to be low on these. I think the sales are going to be low on the goblins as well, but they're going to sell enough of them to get their money out of them. I think the sales on this night builder is going to be medium. And I think the sales on the centaur and the ogre are going to be medium simply because of the price, not because they're bad product. I just think that people spend a little bit um, uh, more on getting as many figures as possible, which means more of the $37 guys and less of the big ogres. Um, and so I'm going to say when it comes to collectability time and what people are going to be looking for, they're going to be looking for the centaur and they're going to be looking for the ogres. Those are going to have the least amount in the wild. They're the most expensive to get. And these are probably two of the coolest guys to come around because of the whole blue thing, blue wave. And if you look at that ogre, he's pretty amazing looking, right? This is like pretty much leagues ahead of what just about most companies are doing in terms of toys and especially a figure like that right so i think if you're the kind of person out there who's going to be buying stuff to put on the shelf as an investment and you're going to resell it later maybe five years maybe even 10 years right uh you know the uh, always get the most expensive guys because they're always probably going to have the least of them made and the lower the supply the bigger the payout and so if you can get an ogre buy one if you can get two buy two if you can get a centaur buy a centaur um, normally i recommend people buy accessory packs because i think a lot of people pass on them overall they just kind of concentrate on getting figures they don't care about it like i don't need 20 more weapons or something like that but then later on they get you know they want those weapons packs and they realize they missed out on them and since they're usually like 12 15 bucks i usually recommend people buy those up and use those to resell but there's no weapons pack in this wave and so we're going to stick to just buying the big guys the ogres and the centaur if you're an investor okay now what am i personally going to buy i'm going to get the uh spirit bender 2 absolutely I would love to get Colonel Parker. I think he's cool, and I think the two extra heads are cool with them. And we'll have to see if any more money gets freed up and comes down the lane. Um, third, I would definitely get the Joseph of the Golden Spear. I would, however, have a bias where I'm buying him to rob the wings for a different character, but still would be a purchase. Still would be a purchase. And then the Blue Shield Soldier, of course, because I've got the other Deluxe Knight Builder I would love to have, but I'm going to be pass passing simply because of money. Uh, however, if somebody were to gift it to me, I could come up with some equal equivalent valuable thing in the action figuratorium from almost any decade to, uh, to give back as a thanks, meaning I would be willing to trade stuff for action figures in the future if people come along and they say hey i got two of these i notice you're looking for one what kind of deal we could work out we can work out a deal action figure charm has a lot of stuff so that is this roundup of the blue wave from four horsemen's mythic legions line this line looks pretty good i'd say it feels like an all-in kind of line if you look at the detail and all the figures they're pretty good there's only one guy that i thought 
kind of sucked. And there's just one guy that I thought was boring, and that's the skeleton, because at the end of the day, it's just a skeleton. That's how I see them. But other people might see them different. Some people might really get into the undead figures, and the golden skeleton could be their favorite. And it should be. No one like me should be stopping them from having a favorite. In fact, if any one of these wants to be your favorite, make it your favorite. So, thanks to everybody who made it this far into the episode. And, uh, you know, everybody, come on, stay charged.